Hello, I'm Jack from leanmusician.com and this is a quick overview of Logic 10's Vintage B3 Virtual Instrument. I'll do a full tutorial at some point in the future with uh, uh, a good guide to all the bells and whistles because it's a full, full extended instrument uh, which uh, really, really does justice to the, the amazing Hammond organ that we all know and love. If you've never seen a Hammond organ in action, there's a principle or a thing that you need to know before we dive in, which is that it has two manuals, so two keyboards, and then a bass keyboard below. So like you'd seen on most organs, they play with their feet, they play with the left hand, while well, they play the bottom manual and they play the top manual. So um, most of us, however, will just be using the one keyboard. Um, I actually have a keyboard here, and it is, it is possible to be able to play the left manual in one keyboard and uh, the right manual in another keyboard. And uh, you'll see here, just here, the draw bars that we have. This denotes the draw bars for the upper manual, which would be the top keyboard. This denotes the draw bars for the pedals, which you'd be playing with your feet if you if you had a, a MIDI um, pedal board, which <laughs> do exist actually. And um, then there's the uh, the lower manual here. So you'll if you listen to this, that's not changing any sound whatsoever because Logic quite rightly assumes that we're just playing the upper manual because we because all keyboards that go into Logic by default just control all instruments. So what are drawbars? Drawbars you can sort of think of like EQ um, uh, that you'd um, change the, the basically the spectrum of sound that's coming into an instrument or that you're hearing. So if we take all of these out and turn the percussion off, no sound comes out whatsoever. It's a bit like um, like bellows in a, in, a, in a real organ. We've not opened any of the, the, um, the channels here. So if I open one of them, the lowest, you hear like a really sort of clean sine wave sound. There is the recognizable organness about it, um, but uh, it's pretty low. So basically the way that Hammond gets such a varied amount of sounds is by pulling in the different harmonics of the instrument. <laughs> Wrong note. Um, so with Logic you have already a whole host of different presets that they've done which I would really recommend that you use rather than playing around although it's really fun it's quite hard to get the sound because there's just so many parameters as you'll see so that's the fundamental thing that's the first fundamental thing the second fundamental thing about Hammond organ is the percussion element you'll hear that there is a percussive sound at the beginning of um, of the note and that's another feature which we'll get to uh, in a minute here. So the second window in uh, the Vintage V3 is the rotor cabinet. If you've ever watched a real Hammond organ player arrive at a gig you do feel sorry for them because they're a bit like the drummer they have to pull this huge huge rotor cabinet which is their amplification round with them and it's um sort of almost the same size if not bigger sometimes and it's super heavy. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice is um, the off and on button, which is kind of important. If we have it, you kind of get this really thin, tinny sound. It reminds me of a kind of 80s film in a waiting room. It's not very, very boring. Anyway, you turn it on and you get just more of a, a warmer sound. It feels more real. It's not too, not as synthesized anyway. So the, uh, Cabinet here, you can actually change the type of cabinet. I don't know a lot about what these are. They're just uh, presumably about the um, the structure of them, what they're made out of. You uh, then have the deflector, which is on or off, and you can see that just in here, the horn, which spins round, there, uh, you can see that the, I'll try and get it at the right angle. There you go. You can see that the deflector is basically a thing that is at the top of the horn, which changes the sound somewhat. <laughs> very slightly. Um, actually, no, that's quite significant. Um, and then uh, you also have the mic position. So it doesn't show it flipping around, but what this this uh, cabinet is now showing us is the front. So the sound is quite different. And 
you're probably most likely going to want it at the back because that's where well it's up to you but the that's where that you're going to be able to get the the sound of the motor which is when these the horn and the drum starts uh spinning around so you'll see that i'm using my sustain pedal rather awkwardly over here because i don't have a proper kind of um uh, uh volume type pedal um for my midi input um but as soon as i push it down you can see well, hopefully anyway yeah you can see the horn spinning up uh speeding up there and if i take it off they slow down so the way that you control and that gives you this sound which, which is like real classic and real real classic sound sort of church thing so it's cool um the way that you control those here is so the maximum rate is here so that's how fast it's going to go so if i have it down here the fastest it's going to go is really slow um even the, even the graphics are messing up it's so slow there um and then the max rate is super fast so you get this kind of almost really, really wild sound um then you have the acceleration which is how fast it takes to get to that maximum rate so if we have that down it's going to go really quick wow already really fast and the maximum you can do it is four seconds so it's going to take four seconds to move up to the point of maximum spin so if we hear that now it sounds a lot more real and then we're there and then it slows down again so that's pretty cool um and you can change the motor control here um and um various different things about it so if you did have another midi input for your pedal you could set it up here i don't um i'm gonna leave the break for various reasons it's um it's not necessarily that important um and i want to keep this tutorial fairly short the next thing which is really cool is changing the mics which is just awesome i love it when instruments have this um spitfire audio are the kings of doing this with vsts they uh just provide you with all these different mics and different mic settings and it's just it's it's silly to not have it in um in virtual instruments these days because it's that's the the room sound and the mic sound are the two key things that make instruments sound real so you can change the different types here and just it gives you very significantly different sound you can hear each each level of the instrument obviously the lower end is going to be coming out of the drum and the higher end is the uh, is the horns there so that is the rotor cabinet next we're going to go into the various effects and options okay so the third window shows us um basically the options for percussion and click and also a few other things the first thing it offers is uh the master controls and this is where you'd access the tuning for the instrument if you'd uh, if you needed to change that <laughs> That sort of thing volume and expression so then the next one is click so click is slightly different to percussion and you can only really tell by your ears i'm not quite sure how it's uh, how that works out in the in the hammond's construction but you can hear here that if i have key off and key on you've got virtually no sound but then if i add key on all the clicking coming in on the when the key is pressed and then when the key is lifted as well so you could have it so that it's only when it's and then when you lift the key there's no click personally i like both because that's what gives the hammond the kind of really really nice real sound here so the velocity one here basically means that if you have it set to full to one the click is going to really respond to how much, how hard you play on the piano. So if I play hard, you're going to get hard clicks. But if I play soft, softer clicks. If you just want really hard clicks all the time, you're going to pull it right down to zero. So, so if I, even if I play really soft, loads of click. So you probably want it here. And that's kind of like average. Percussion is similar. Um, if we go uh, to here, just pull up the fast a bit, and then the low and the high, you're going to get really nice, beefy. Mm -hmm. 
Same, same principle here with the velocity. I'm totally overloading my logic here. Um, so let's just quickly go on to the effects and then we'll wrap this up. Um, master just turns the effects on or off. Reverb here, self-explanatory. You can put it in small box, different things. Or you can have huge. And then pre or post. Equalize is useful to use uh, after playing around with wah wah for a little bit. So if we change this to kind of retro wah and add some bite, you've got. Distortion, drive and tone. And then there's loads more in Expert, which we won't go into now. So I hope that was useful. Um, do drop us a comment and do make sure that you pop in on leadmusician.com and let us know uh, if there's anything that we can help you with in terms of tutorials with Logic and more. Cheers.